What's going on, guys? Welcome back to this week's episode of Outside the Arena with Rob and Griff. I'm Griffin Senek, joined by my co-host, Rob Goldberger. Before we start, we do just want to say thank you guys so much for all the support recently. If you are new to the channel, if you saw this video recommended on YouTube, we're a sports podcast. We post weekly. A lot more interviews coming soon. Um, so drop a subscribe, drop a like, drop a comment. We greatly appreciate it. Check out some of our recent videos we've done. You know, we have interviews recently with Cliff Floyd, Ian Rappaport, Kyle Yates, a fantasy football expert. So go check that out. And of course, the weekly episodes we do talking about the latest in sports. And today, I mean, it's been a great sports week. We've seen the NHL finals. Um, you know, avalanches are, you know, just killing the, the Tampa Bay Lightning right now. 2-0 two, two in the series. And the NBA finals came to a close this week. The Golden State Warriors like we've been predicting on this podcast. And you almost had the, the finals down to a T before. I mean, I know you picked Philly because you were a Philly fan. Was, you were, yeah, but if I was you were going point. Celtics Warriors. Yeah. That's what you wanted to, to say. And then I kind of told you, you got to pick Philly. But, um, yeah, yeah, you know, the Warriors pulled it out in six games. You know, Steph Curry, honestly, um, you know, I mean, hell of a series. I mean, game five, he was a little, you know, probably his worst game of the series. But game six, you know, 34, seven and seven, no complaints there. And, you know, honestly, as, you know, a Cavs fan, as, you know, a, a kind of Warriors type hater, I really did enjoy watching this team play. Like, I think it was just a fun team. Steph Curry is just so exciting to watch. I mean, I know I, I used to really, you know, when you're going in the finals against him, it, it's frustrating. But, like, when you actually get to appreciate this guy's greatness, he's truly remarkable. And this team is just so fun. Um, and, you know, the Boston Celtics, obviously, you know, Jason Tatum, a, a total implosion. I mean, this guy was just nowhere to be found basically for almost the entire series um what are your thoughts rob on on, on this series i mean golden state you know that what a team they assembled i mean i know they've got guys hitting the market so it's going to be a little interesting to see how it shakes out with you know salary and, and whatnot but what are you thinking yeah i think the player definitely i was most impressed and surprised by was andrew wiggins and especially what he brought to the defensive side of the ball was yeah. absolutely crazy i've never i didn't i've never seen him play defense like that to be honest and you're right, Jason Tatum just had a total disappearance. I mean, Jalen Brown looked like the man in game six. He really did all he could. I thought I thought he had a great shooting performance, at least. You know, it's questionable whether he can run an offense. But Jason Tatum, I was watching the couple of friends, and I just thought he's sitting in the corner. Like, he wasn't really calling for the ball or anything like that. He was just sort of, like, okay with letting his team. I remember he checked back in in the fourth quarter with like eight or nine minutes left. And he had two minutes, he had like two points from that point on. And it was a dunk on the first possession he was in. He just wasn't good enough. And I mean, I said, it, you know, on our last episode, I think I said it even the episode before that, like he hasn't been good enough. He just hasn't. And I mean, I thought Al Horford was good. I thought Rob, Rob Williams had a great series, especially for, he was playing at, you know, 50%, not even close to what he's capable of. And I think, you know, he's one of the most valuable players for the Celtics, but Look, like you said, I think the greatness, you know, I, I think, you know, a lot of people try to, you know, replicate this Warriors formula, this, that. But I think at the end of the day, like, this dynasty comes down to, of course, you know, you had KD join and sort of, ha you know, push, push the balance in their favor. But really, this longevity of this dynasty is really just about, you know, having a top 10 player of all time in, in his prime for his entire career. And one... That is so easy to play with. And he makes – he the way he plays just makes everyone around him look so much better. It, it really does. I mean, you know, it, it, I, I, I don't like how it's sort of being framed as this, like, generational carry job because, like, that's a great team, though. I mean, yeah, the, Andrew Wiggins is great. Draymond, after his – you know, after he recorded his podcast, the, the, you know, after their last, last loss – I thought he was great in their last three wins on both sides of the ball, to be honest, especially, especially in the closeout game, to be honest. I, I was really surprised. Draymond actually made a couple threes. I don't think I've seen that in a while. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Jordan Poole wasn't at his best. Clay really was not at his best, especially in game six. But look, they, uh, game, six. game six, Clay did not. Yeah, look, he I, just tries to do two. I, I kind of talked about it last week. Like, I think it's just yeah. become this whole myth that even he's trying to like, fulfilled to like he's just got in his head I think almost that like oh I have to do like he was just chucking shot 20 shots in the game I mean he was yeah, just no, shooting he the ball way too much missing. he was tucking and missing for sure but Andrew Wiggins was just I, I, I keep coming back to him because whenever they need they needed a tough bucket he could get it for him whenever he could play defense 
They got to firm now. Andrew Wiggins, when he's 28 or 29, will probably be a number one option on a failing team. You know, this is sort of the cycle of a player like Andrew Wiggins. I think it's just a very interesting, you know, study of a player that is just, you know, like, I think he's almost like a Jeremy Grant type of player, if that makes sense, where, you know, Jeremy Grant is content with being a number one option on a bad team. And I, I think, you know, that might be when Andrew Wiggins, Andrew, some team is going to end up paying Andrew Wiggins at some point. And I'm not sure whether it's going to end up being the Warriors. And I, I think it might be, you know, one of these mediocre, just, li, just you know, Andrew Wiggins might be, I, I don't know how to articulate this, but Andrew Wiggins is just going to be, you know, the number one option, I think, on a mediocre to bad team. I think that might be what what might be in his future. Yeah, I mean, you know, ultimately, I think for him, like, it, it's going to come down to what he wants. And at this point, you know, he was a, a, a key, key player. I mean, the second best player on the Warriors. And, you know, he, you know, he has his championship now. He's gone through a lot of up downs in his career. I mean, if that guy, you know, no one's going to criticize that guy for getting the most amount of money he could possibly get. Um, and he deserves every penny of it. I mean, he was incredible this yeah, year. I was, sure. you know, at that all-star break when he was in there, I was kind of like, what, what is this joke? I didn't, you know, to be <laughs> honest, I hadn't really watched much of the Warriors, but I mean, you, you watch him in the playoffs and especially in this series, I mean, this guy's, he's really evolved his game and, and you, you just see the kind of, you know, real talent he truly possesses that made him, you know, the number one overall pick for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, I think that the Warriors, yeah, like when you say that Steph Curry, this is an ultimate carry job, people start comparing it to the LeBron Cavs in like 2018. You know, obviously that one game, I think, what was it, game two? Um, yeah, I believe. Yeah, so that was like a, an all-time carry performance from Steph that game. But throughout this series, I mean, that's not been the case. And like you said, I mean, Golden State, this team has just capitalized off having – you know, Stephen Curry in his prime for, you know, how many ever years it's been. And they've proven that, you know, the, I actually saw something that was interesting and, and, you know, circulating that, you know, talking about Kevin Durant, like he was kind of just, obviously KD is, is, is elite and, you know, a top 10, 15 player, however you want to rank him of all time. But, you know, the Warriors, they, they've they now won, you know, with Harrison Barnes in that role, with Kevin Durant in that role. And then Andrew Wiggins slid right into that small forward role and, you know, the, the express moves on. I mean, it really people is. Forget, I mean, people, no, yeah. I mean, let me just, sorry to interrupt. Iguodala too in the role. I mean. Dude, Harrison Barnes was a player. Like, people forget. Like, people are going to think this is a joke that are watching. But Harrison Barnes used to be able to play. Like, in 2016, he was a legit threat. War, I mean, you and look Steph, at. Like, I hate to say it, but, like, at the end of the day, for me about the Warriors and people might. You know, welcome my Draymond inclusion here, but I think it's always been about Steph Clay and Draymond. I really do. Like, I and and specifically, it's really always been about it's it's been about Steph always. Like that team with that system will breed. They they breed elite role players first off. Let's talk about that. They always have elite role players because, like like I said earlier, Steph Curry just makes play, guys better. He does. He gets guys paid. Like, Kevon Looney is going to get paid. Jordan, Jordan Poole is going to get a fat contract. Andrew Wiggins, obviously. I mean, it, and it Kevon is Looney crazy. had Kevon Looney was excellent all playoffs. I mean, this dude is just like a pure bread center. Yeah. Kevon Looney's great. I mean, you know, this Golden State dynasty, I mean, it's very interesting. Obviously, you know, who knows when this thing's going to end? I mean, it's probably going to end when Steph ends, but. Clay Thompson, I mean, it's very fascinating. I mean, obviously, it's very unfortunate what happened, what happened to him with the two injuries and, you know, missing two years. But, you know, it, it's clear that this guy's a shell of his former self at this point. Um, you know, ultimately, where, where he ends up next year will be interesting to see. But at the end of the day, I mean, you know, he was still a key player potentially for this championship team. Do they win the championship without him? I think is a fascinating question. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if it would really affect who are, anything. Who are but you it, replacing but it, in that role? Who are you putting in that role, though, is the question. I guess a, a Jordan Poole esque player would have to play in that role. Yeah, but that. you, yeah, but you get another player. Like you don't get to replace them from the bench. You have to imagine. Well, if Clay's, let's say, tours it, you know, he didn't recover from the torn Achilles. He retired. No, but like if he retired, like if he retired, for example, they would have added another player. So you would have Jordan. Let's say he's injured. Let's say he got injured. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right, all right, fair. Do fair. they win the championship? I, probably, they, probably. Or you know, you could replace him, but I mean. It's interesting, and, and obviously for the Celtics, I mean, to me, the Boston Celtics, they were a good team. They, they, they really had a heck of a run, but I just don't think this team is – I still don't believe this team is, is the best team in the Eastern Conference, and I, I think this 
we've kind of talked about a team we talked about it too was with the Cincinnati Bengals last year that that was kind of their shot yeah. and to me this feels like the the Celtic shot I mean you know Tatum I don't know man I mean this was really concerning for a superstar people consider this guy top 10 in the NBA and it's just crazy dude I mean, I've it, never I, I th- he was just hiding in the corner. I've never seen anything like like. I mean, he shot like thirty percent the entire. It's not just one game, too. I mean, he shot thirty no, percent. I said, the I said, series. you know, I saw somebody on Twitter say, and th- they were like, "How many of these games did Jason Tatum outplay Andrew Wiggins in? One, like one of these games, maybe two. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy, and you know, when you're when you're playing a team like the Golden State Warriors, you know, we've seen. The Boston Celtics, some of these, you know, magical players kind of hit their stride. I mean, we've seen the Grant Williams hit God knows how many threes. We've seen Derek White have, you know, incredible fourth quarters. And that just wasn't, you know, happening in this series. And Marcus Smart, you know, he played a, a very tough defense. I mean, you know, the, the guy is a one of the greatest floppers I've ever seen. I mean, this he'll get touched. <laughs> and, and then Jordan Poole did it to him. I mean, it was pretty funny. Um, the back and forth there. Al Horford, I mean, this guy was a catalyst for this team. I mean, without Al Horford, this team's on the NBA Finals, as crazy as that is. He really was essential to this team. And Rob we'll see Williams what happens. Was, Rob Williams was great, dude. Oh, no. Williams, obviously, is essential. I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, this team obviously was built off defense and the star power of Tatum and Brown. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens next year with the Celtics and, and the rest of the Eastern Conference. Because, I mean, I guess we can kind of pivot from that. I mean, the outlook of the NBA now, I mean, obviously free agency is set to wide occur open. shortly. Wide the open. draft is is so, coming soon, but I think gonna, free agency, I mean, I feel like there's not uh, any of the it's, most it's elite. Elite guys. That, Griff. It's, in about, it's in about two weeks. I know, but like, who's the, the top free agents in this class? Levine, Beal. Zach Levine. Which there was a report that he's pr- probably going back to the Bulls, which I found insane. I, I didn't, I was both shocked to hear that. Uh, of course, it shows me NFL free agent rankings first. That's why the <laughs> NFL is king. All right, here we go. Top players available. Well, James Harden, but he's he's coming back here regardless, so that doesn't matter. Harden, Kyrie, low key. Are the what? What are the Nets going to do with Kyrie? That's a I think he'll come back. I think he'll come back. No, he'll come back. But for the like, is this his last year in Brooklyn? I think it's very possible. I think he's going to get a long term deal, like four or five years. There was that report came out that they really didn't want to give him one though. We'll see. I mean, look. So here's my thing about the NBA right now is that I think we're in a very exciting time because for the first time in a while, you're in a league not dominated by super teams. It's. And it'll come again. Like it'll by the end of this decade, I'm sure there will be another super team. But it's in, it's with the new generation that's been drafted. Is they don't they haven't really been able like none of those guys hit free agency yet to where the point yeah, where yeah. they're and able I mean, to go and other and, places. And beating Jokic, who I guess and beating Jokic and Giannis all re-upped too with their with their initial team. Yeah, and then We're you've got the young re-up. guys like Luca, Trey. Oh no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Devin Booker, yeah. obviously Tatum. We saw. I mean. But, like, I think there's so much parity in the league right now, and I think it's awesome to see because this is a crucial offseason for, like, I think Golden State has pretty pretty tight grip on the West, except the Los Angeles Clippers are coming fat in hard next year. I'm very interested to see what they look like, what Kawhi looks like. If Kawhi returns to Kawhi form, I think they're unquestionably the best team in the in the West, and I think probably maybe even the league, to be honest. We've been saying this about the Clippers, though, for years. I mean, yeah, but Kawhi, with, ever with a healthy Kawhi, Kawhi, you don't think they win at all with a healthy Kawhi last year? They took the Suns to six with just Paul George. We've been seeing the the clip. I've been hearing about the Clippers, this team. Well, to be since fair, they the first, signed Kawhi and Paul George. The first team, they just can't stay the healthy. West. The problem is they just can't stay healthy. So why are they going to magically stay healthy all of a sudden? Because I it's think it's like saying I, Anthony Davis is going to be healthy next season. I mean, I have more happen. faith in Kawhi to remain healthy than Anthony Davis. Like, sure, but Kawhi, did, dude, Kawhi has had multiple years now in his career where he just disappears with injuries. He had that magical year he came back for in Toronto, had like a year with the Clippers, great. and then he he's been great. disappeared. He was great his first two years in Los Angeles. But what they have to show for it? What they have to show for it? This is recency bias. This is complete recency. But what they have to show for it? Did they ever make the NBA Finals? No. Well, the first season was the bubble. The second season, Kawhi got hurt. 
the bu- what's wrong with the bubble? Kawhi, Kawhi, Kawhi was in the is- bubble. They were all in the bubble. I, this whole bubble narrative is like so fake. I mean, it's fake. Who like cares the, about well, like, the bubble? Well, like, the, what do you mean? Who cares about the bubble? Like, what's your point? The Clippers' home field advantage would have given them such an edge. Like, the Clippers have no I fans. I just believe that if, if the Clippers if probably would have lost immediately. Of course, not. If you put it in a setting where the Clippers have four home games, do you really believe they're losing? Do you really believe the Clippers fans are that intense of an environment? No, no, right? no, but that's not what I mean. Like, I just don't – do you think Denver fans are? I mean, Jesus. Denver hasn't done anything. Well, they Den- won, what, one series that year in the bubble? No. Well, Denver Denver was the team that beat the Clippers. Yeah. Jamal beat- Murray went unconscious. Well, that was – well, that was the year they blew a 3-1 lead. Yeah, but, I mean, dude – like, I don't, we've, I've heard so much we'll about the Clippers it, for years. If they Kawhi haven't shown healthy, us anything. Kawhi's you're going to look stupid at this time next year. Long injury. You're going to look stupid at this time next year. Uh, when the Clippers go down in the second round in the NBA playoffs. I, I hope, I, we'll see. Okay. I mean, it's just like, what's the Clippers? So they've got Kawhi, they've got Paul George, you've got Reggie Jackson, you've got. Kawhi who's and Paul George is enough. If they can Dude, stay that, healthy, Griffin. I, I'll be honest. I prefer the Lakers. Bigger. Business. No, no, no. The Lakers 100%. are atrocious. The Lakers Ooh. are atrocious. I, I'm saying I prefer their top top tier of talent. I would rather I, have the Lakers. Lakers big are an atrocious basketball team. Oh. They have Russell Westbrook on their team. They have Russ. I think Russell. I think Russell. I think last year was a, a disaster of a year. I don't know what the Lakers are going to do for to build out the rest of their team, but I do, I do believe that Russell Westbrook will be better. I think he's, I think he has now, to be what, better. What is all right now? What evidence do you have that has made you believe that? I think that Russell Westbrook last year was a, better than people give him credit for. I think people expected no. him to go in. And, I think was, people expected him to club. go. I'll, I'll say this: he was. You can't. Russell Westbrook last year, people expected to see the same stats that he was going to average a triple double in LA, which was never reasonable, never was, reasonable at all. Well, no, he, well, if you was, actually look at how, obviously, look, Russell Westbrook, he was bad. The dude throws up he was bricks. bad. He was I'm not bad. saying he was good, but I'm not. I think people people made it seem like Russell Westbrook was like the worst player in the entire world last year. Was Russell well, Westbrook I mean, the main was, reason? He, he's was hor- Russell he has Westbrook the worst contract? The main, he has the worst contract in the NBA. There's a lot of the NBA is full of bad contracts. No, well, he's the worst. No, that's making $47 million. John Wall has the worst contract in the NBA, and that's a fact. John Wall has not played, and he's sitting collecting $50 million. I would say Russ is more of a negative by playing. Come on. No, (laughs) Russ was a disaster last year. Russell Westbrook was not. No, no, no. I will say this. I will say this. I will say this. Russ wasn't. The cause of the Lakers' problems. He was just no. a, he was just a problem. Was Russ? Was this the best year of Russell Wilson's career? Westbrook's career? No, not at all. Was the Lakers was it a year? Uh, okay. Well, do I think I Russell mean, Westbrook will be better even, next year? Yes. If, if you would, if I had to take a guess, he's not even going to be on the Lakers next year. I think he'll still be. On, who? What are they going to trade him for? Who wants Russell I, Westbrook? I, I think Charlotte point? is going to end up taking his contract on, and I think Gordon Hayward is going to go to the Lakers. Gordon Hayward, that dude's just washed up at this point. No, Gordon Hayward has been pretty good, dude. Eh. Like Gordon Hayward's just like, eh. Eh. Gordon, Hayward, Gordon Hayward was fine. Ah, he, shot, he shot nearly 40% from three last year. He's Average fine. 16 points a game. He's a fine player. Let's see what Russell Westbrook averaged, actually. Let's see. Russ shot 44% from the field, 30% from three. <laughs> he shot 28. He shot 30% from three. Oh, Russell Westbrook. He shot 67% from the line. Russell Westbrook in his almost, what was his MVP year? 17, 18? Right. Where he robbed James Harden, you mean? Whatever you want to say. He shot 0.005% worse from the field this year and shot the exact same from three. That's why I say he robbed James Harden slash LeBron. But there's all I, but you get what I'm saying. There's all this Russ slander, but he put up the same shooting statistics as he did his MVP season. He just wasn't going to score as much because he had LeBron and AD. I mean, if you actually I mean, look at it, Russell yeah, Westbrook but, yeah, but really did point, not that's have. That's no point, Griffin. That's no point. Even when LeBron and AD were out, when LeBron and AD were out, he was terrible. 
That's the Rob, only thing. Russell Westbrook he at was this signed. point in his Russell career cannot in. carry that team with well, those But that's, but that's what he was brought players. in to do. But that's what he was brought in to do. Russell Westbrook was brought in, was brought in as a when third LeBron option. And AD, when LeBron and AD inevitably went out for injury, what would happen is Russ would step in and carry the load. And it wasn't. Because guess what? Russ was a whore. Bringing in Russ was a whore. When has Russell Westbrook been able to carry a team on his own successfully? Like, the whole point is, though, do you agree? That That's Russell not who it? Russ is right. as a player. All right. Let, let's get to the core of the question. Do you believe that Russell Westbrook was a bad addition? And if you say no, I, I can't believe that. I think you need I, to I think it. it's I negated the Lakers because they're now in cap space hell and there's no way to get out of it. And well, I, they think also that bleed it the fit, I think that the fit pro- is not there. I don't think it's a great fit. Do I think that Russell Westbrook is this ultra – is, is do I think Russell Westbrook is bad at basketball? No, I think Russell Westbrook is still a good player. And it, the no, is in the pudding no, at the I end would of the say day. Russell Westbrook is an overall net negative at this stage. I don't know about that. He averaged 18, 7, and 7 last year. I mean, people want that to write it out. Anything. Of anything. Well, Russell Westbrook has been a stat. stat on a horrid efficiency. Let's see what his true shooting percentage A true shooting, I would consider a true shooting percentage below 60 to be pretty bad. Let's see what his true shoot. Where is it? True shooting percentage. Why does Basketball Reference not have it? Advanced. True shooting percentage, fifty-one percent. That's that's horrible. That is horrible. That's where he's been at his whole career, though. He's never been above sixty percent. Right, but career. that's why he's considered an inefficient player. Eighteen points on Russell Westbrook is, is a not top. Good. Where would you rank Russell Westbrook all time? I would say he's a top ten point guard of all time. Yeah, and he's playing how he has his whole career at this point. No, no I'm not. Much a, in his pro, in his prime, he was obviously he is out of his prime, and obviously he still. That's had an a bad insult. I would say comparing. Year. I would say saying he's been the whole player he is now is an insult to Russ in his prime. Uh, statistically, shooting percentage wise, it is. Yeah, but identical. you're cherry. I think those stats are cherry picked, in my opinion. You can say whatever you want about the stats. It's just. I'm reading off statistics because Russell Westbrook is known as the stat patter. So I'm reading off the statistics because that is how he has been known his whole career. And you would agree with that assessment that most people judge Russ. Look at Russ. Mr. Triple Double is what that's what best. No, when Russ retires, of. his legacy will be breaking the triple double record and all that shit. But at this point, at 32 years old, he's washed. I'm not saying I don't think he's in his prime. I I don't think he's a all star caliber player in the NBA at this point, and I don't think he's worth his contract at all. Okay, so then what are we debating about? Like you're just going off saying Russell Westbrook is like garbage. I'm saying I think he's, he's not garbage, but at the end of the day, that trade number one depleted all of. Them. Obviously, they should not have made that trade. What if they had just traded for Demar and acquired Buddy? Those would have. That's that was the alternative. Obviously, I'm not arguing they should have not have done. We both dis- discussed this and agreed that their season would have been 100 percent different if they had Demar and Buddy Hill. All right, all right, I agree. They have put themselves in hell. I'm saying that I, I just don't trust. I don't know what we're going to see from Kawhi Leonard at this point. I have no idea what to expect. Who I mean, knows if he's even going to play next though. season? I would not shock me if Kawhi Leonard just ups and retires. No, that's more of a Kyrie Irving thing to do. What, like, this guy disappears at times, Rob. You know it's true. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of him because of you know what, but, like, I'm going to sit here and defend him because he's, like, a monster of a player. He's, he, he's an incredible player when healthy, but we have to see. Can he stay healthy this season? We will I mean, see. Yeah, but but my prediction is if they remain healthy, the Clippers will be the West representative in the 2023 finals. I think it's a little early to say that. I mean, if I had to say I think the West is definitely very interesting. The, I think, I think that, the top the top dogs are gonna be the Warriors, the Nuggets, the and the Clippers, I think. Nuggets are a weird team. Well, it depends on how they come back from injury. Yeah. They're saying they're I mean, getting I second and third. Who knows if Michael back. Porter will even come back? That's another guy where his issues is like once you talk about his back issues again with him, it's like, oh, like that. Yeah, but that's, that, that's regardless, that's they're getting Murray back, who's gonna be yeah, I, I agree. 
Um, but I mean, they haven't done anything with Murray. The Suns will be I'm very interested be by the uh, the Dallas Mavericks, and we haven't talked about that. The trading yeah, for Christian I mean, Wood. Yeah, um, you can talk about that for sure. I mean, it, it was a good deal. I mean, they didn't really have to give up too yeah, much I mean, for it's a guy a, who who's a solid player. Yeah, I think um, it's a fine trade. I mean, they I, need I kinda, another true star though. This can't I be their like big it. move. I kind of like it for both sides, to be honest. I mean, the, they don't really have a need for Christian Wood, to be honest, right now. Uh, he kind of had a rocky relationship with the fan base down in Houston for a little bit there. But uh, listen, uh, you know, I the only thing – the Mavericks cannot be done this offseason. No, that's what, they I, cannot, yeah, that's what I – They cannot say we got Christian Wood. Well, they're going to have to re-sign Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson's going to get a hefty deal. I mean – Yeah, he is. I mean, look, I think the thing is – and that's what just kills these teams, I feel. When they sign these players who are good but not elite to these mega, mega deals and you put yourself in I cap mean, space. Brunson out. Isn't gonna, relative to market value, Brunson isn't going to command that much because they, I think they have his bird rights as well. Brunson could get 25 to $30 million, I believe. Yeah, I think that's where he's going to go. 400 for him is probably reasonable. Yeah. It's just the NBA contracts are just crazy. Like, there's too many guys getting too much money in the league because of how small the teams are. It's just insane. Kevon Looney is probably getting 20 mil. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Definitely. Not, not definitely. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's Kevon Looney. I mean, this is just, it's, I mean, I can see that Kevon Looney is going to be a disappointing contract when, <laughs> not like, if before he signs. Yeah, but not if he remains with the Warriors. He's not. We all know the Warriors are not going to pay Kevon Looney $20 million. They know that they've got Jonathan Wait, Kuminga. The Jonathan Warriors, Kuminga. Is that, is that first off, let's talk about the Warriors organization. I don't think they're even that well run. I just think they – listen, let me let, let no, me the back up. The just spends whatever – he says, I don't care what it costs. Most, not only do they spend money, but listen, bro, listen, listen. I think that they're held up by Steve Kerr first off that maintains like a – no, 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 no. Listen, listen. Wait, listen. like Steve Kerr's a detriment? No, 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 no. They're held oh. up. Like they're, they're, they're propped up, I should say. Like, oh, okay. I was going to say, I was like, I think no, Steve no, Kerr's they're, they're like, do you think Steve Kerr is a top 10 coach all time at this point? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's won four championships. So, yeah, of course. Um, I mean, nine total rings. What a monster. Uh, Good for him, too. His story is, inc- I mean, watching his story in the, yeah, the I mean, Jordan that, documentary yeah. was, yeah. I, I gave me a lot of respect for him. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think. Steve Kerr maintains a pretty good public image, but like at the end of the day, like, like people will give me all this bullshit that like this, that, but like you drafted James Wiseman over LaMelo ball at a certain point. Yeah. I mean, we'll and... see what happens with James. Wise. Obviously James Wiseman will not be near LaMelo ball and it's a horrible draft pick, but and they have to the figure out, like, they have to the figure fact... out a way to turn him into something. I think like this, like roster has a lot of depth and it turned out that way because of like, I think how good Steph is. But, like, to me. They I were bad for two years. That's how they got them. I'm just going to say something. Like, I just gotta, I, here, I got to. I, I'm going to have a little bit of an unpopular take here. So, I think that them holding on to 7 and 14 was, like, a pretty bad idea. Because I think if they had traded them for, like, like they could have traded package that for, like, a very, very, very good player. For somebody, like. And, like, at the end of the day, like, when Steph retires, the Warriors are going to return to mediocrity because their ownership is, like, I just think, like, they're, they were, like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I think that the Warriors. I mean, I think Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga, like, I like, I do like They're just not anything special. Well, we don't know that yet, though. They didn't really play that much this year. And, like, who knows how the, Moses Moody, I mean, I'm not saying he'll be anywhere near Steph Curry, but, like, when you're getting mentored by guys like Steph and Clay, like Moses Moody could turn out to be a pretty decent player, I think. And, and Kuminga, I mean, he, you know, this guy was a potential, you know, number one pick before the, you know, the whole season, I guess, of his year. Like, I'm interested to see how those guys turn out. James Wiseman, I, I know he, at this point, you know, people will say he's a bust and very rightfully, um, you know, <laughs> next year for me is the year for, you know, we have to see if he can even, if he can't contribute next year, I mean, then it's over. But, you know, he's got to show up. If he can show something, maybe there's something there. But we'll see. Probably not, though. <laughs> yeah. I, Sorry to be negative, James. Nah, James, I'm supporting you if you're watching this. Yeah, YouTube's been recommending the videos. Maybe James Wiseman yeah. got it and, and wants to hear what we think about the NBA Finals. Um, yeah, I mean, 
I mean, we've talked about the West a lot. I mean, let's go to the Eastern Conference. I mean, you, you know, the, the East is very interesting. You've got, obviously, you know, Boston, who, who's basically got all their major contributors still signed. So they'll, they'll probably have a similar roster. Um, Philly, you know, who, who, what do you think they have to do? I mean, obviously, they're going to reset Harden, but it just I seems think- like this team just right now still needs something else because I, I just yeah, don't I think, think their current roster is good enough to win the finals so they're definitely i think their plan is to trade danny green and number 23 for a role player um on wednesday night uh and i think harden what harden's gonna do is just sign a short-term contract which is gonna be good it'll be like 380 or something like that 390 i don't really care as long as it's for three years that'll be cool whatever he's not gonna sign a a, a max which is it's good. I don't think anybody was going to give him a max, to be honest. So hopefully, I think the best thing I can do as a Sixers fan, and then, you know, if any other Sixers fans are watching this, is just, you know, pray James Harden gets right, because I think that's our best. Like, at the end of the day, that's our best shot, if James Harden can get right at all. But, uh, listen. I don't think that's going to happen. No, but I mean, not I think get James right. Harden. Not get I mean, right to you James Harden. You slander Russ. James Harden's going to be. Harden, Harden was significantly better than Russ. I agree, but, like. I think James Harden is trending downwards and you no, could be, I, mean, I, just think, I think in I, a year or two, it, he could be having a Russell Westbrook Lakers type season for the Sixers. I think, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm, I'm just being honest. I mean, Harden has taken a steep decline in, in how he's played. I, I agree, but I think. He's still a Harden, great player. The thing, is, the thing is it happens so quickly because. It directly correlates with this hamstring injury. I mean, I think you have to agree with that. And, and it, you know, he's aging. And when you go through injuries no, like think, that, it sucks. But I don't think, to me, bro, like, it's not it, – it, in his age 32 season, Griffin, like, he was – like, he came third in MVP voting in his age 32 season. Well, look at what LeBron's doing at 37. No, 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 no but I understand different. that. Do you know when that was, though? Like, he was doing this with the Nets. And then what happened – dude – he dropped 41 7 and 7 in Boston's head in the closeout game. Like, I just don't. Or, what did he come? He came top five that year, right? Harden. It might have been Curry now that I think about it. I know he came very. Uh, James Harden's still a great player. I just think, you know, I, he's definitely not one what he once was. And I think that's why some Philly fans expect it out of him, which is just definitely. And I know, I'm not saying you, I know you didn't expect that, but like, I think it's unrealistic to assume that James Harden is going to be, you know, 80% of what he was in Houston even. Like, I don't think he's going to be close no, to that. I mean, I, yeah, but I also think that the team was just so horribly constructed last year. Like, I, you tuned into a couple Sixers game, I assume. I mean, yeah. you saw that, like, we just had no depth at the end of the day. Like, Shake was solid, but, like. Those guys have been on the team. Nobody probably. else. Nobody else was good, really. Years. Him, Cork. Well, is Corkmon still there? No, we're gonna get rid of him. Uh, yeah, uh, but like, those are the guys that like it just this mediocre depth. Oh, yeah. and, so, you know, we saw gonna, Boston find their guy. The main guys. The main objective. The main objective for us has to be to get rid of Tobias. At the end of the day, his contract is like it's crippling. You don't under like it cripples the franchise. Well, it could. The only thing that could be good about that contract is because you can, you know. You like the Sixers, obviously, even without Tobias or in bad cap space, will be like in the negative. But like when you have a contract like well, Tobias, the, if you can well, find a team, well, if, if you can find a team to take him, though, you could get some offsetting salaries with players that actually could be very good. That's oh, yeah, that's and that's that that's the plan. So you just got to throw him in some first round last offseason. We want last offseason, we wanted to deal him to OKC, and OKC like backed out essentially at the last minute because they're one of the only teams that can do it. So it's going to be a three team trade eventually. And to be honest, I don't even know if I want to start. Like, get me some athletic. What about like De'Aaron Fox? Nah, because I would rather a wing than a point guard. Like, I want wings. Just, I want wings who can shoot the crap out of the ball. And you know what? Like, I got to be honest with myself. We're not going to win shit with Doc Rivers. We're not. Yeah. Doc Rivers is a fucking joke. He really is. (laughs) But I also think, look, I think I, 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 the only thing that I, I don't like to see is, like, we all we are always going to be, like, pretty good as long as Joel Embiid is who he is. And I don't really see a room for him. Obviously, yeah. Yeah, so. It's a, and the only thing about him is just injuries you got to worry about. 
And the the worst part was like, oh, he just had such a freak injury, dude. It sucked. And at yeah. the end of the day, like, he just if Jill be, I'm I'm still comp. Like, I just wish we had been able to play Miami with a healthy, uh, healthy Embiid. But you know, it is what it is. Miami was banged up too, and I mean, Jimmy Butler. They were banged up, but come on, you can't compare Kyle. La- you cannot compare Kyle Lowry to Joel Embiid. I think on a good night, Kyle Lowry is as good as anyone in the league. Uh, yeah, <laughs> is a, a a certain part of him is. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you look at the rest of the Eastern Conference. I mean, I think Milwaukee's going to be good. Obviously, Chris Middleton. Without you know, Chris Middleton's healthy, they might be the NBA champions right now. If we're being 100 percent on it, it's a, there's a possibility um, because of how good Gian- Giannis would have yeah. disappeared like Jason Tatum did at the bottom of, at, no, at the end no, of the day. No. Yeah, Giannis and, is that guy. I mean, he is. Yeah, Giannis guy. is him. Um, Sixers, obviously, we just talked about Miami. I mean, it seems like they'll kind of be back, but like, are they good enough? I don't believe win in the him finals. I, I respect Jimmy Butler a lot, but and I think he's a great playoff performer. But I think last year was about as far as they're going to go. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think that you know Jimmy Butler. I mean, that was a heck of a year, heck of a a playoff run. I don't know if he's capable of even matching that. As you know, he's been great, but we'll see. Um, you know, you look at the rest of the Eastern Conference and then we'll move to the draft to end this real quick. I mean, you've got obviously, you know, teams like, you know, uh, let me find, there's, here's a list of the teams. I mean, Brooklyn's fascinating, obviously. And I think Brooklyn, there's two things with Brooklyn. It's going to come down to health and, and, and Ben Simmons. I mean, Ben Simmons is the huge question mark. If Ben Simmons can be a, an elite defender that really finds a, his role in, in Brooklyn, they might win the NBA Finals with Kyrie Irving. I mean, it's just a fact. I mean, with that, if a, and I know you don't believe in Ben Simmons, and I'm not saying, and who knows what to expect? He's even going to play, and I'm not counting on it. Just like, let me just interject, Griff. Like, but that here's the thing: a team that has zero chemistry with a bad coach doesn't work out too often. Just doesn't. Yeah, I mean, I, I we both have agreed that Steve Nash is not cut out to be a, a head coach and needs to go. Um, I, I don't really understand why he is still in a position to be the head coach. Um, it's very odd, but hey, at the end of the day, you know, some teams are trying. Um, you know, the Cleveland Cavs are, are a team I got to throw out there in a, in a group with like Atlanta, Charlotte, Chicago, Toronto. I do like the Cavs' future. Um, I don't know if it's their time yet. Uh, I, I, I'm i curious to see what they do in the offseason with a guy like Colin Sexton who didn't play really much. Karis LeVert's another interesting piece. I mean, Cleveland, I what do you think with them? I, I feel like it's – I don't think they're title contenders at all right now. I think that they just need more time to develop, I, I think is what I, – I think that Evan Mobley needs another year. Darius Garland's hitting his stride, and they just got to find their their other pieces outside of, you know, those two and – and Jared Allen that really mesh. I mean, what do you what are your thoughts on you know any of those teams that I mentioned? Whoever yeah, you want to focus I, on. I like obviously Cleveland a lot. I mean, I like Toronto a lot, even though I'm not really too fond of their fan base any anymore after you know the whole game six debacle. But uh, <laughs> I I I think that they both have really really bright futures, and I think that the East is just considerably stronger than the West. Like I think. Look, all these that my concern is that all these teams are just going to beat up on each other. Like, they just do, they just all beat up on each other. I mean, it's really yeah. tough to just, you know, play four games against each of these teams. But I think a team like the Bulls really are in a lot of trouble. I'm really not sure. Like, that's a team that's in purgatory to me. I'm not really sure where they go from here. Uh, like, I, they're so I, weird. They're good all, on like, paper uh, and like, they have good depth. It's just like, I don't, they're just not good enough. I mean, we'll see when Lonzo and obviously Caruso hopefully are healthy for the whole year next year. But Lonzo is just – he really has had some bad injury problems throughout his career. He's just another guy who really hasn't been able to stay healthy. Uh, but, look, the Cavs and the Raptors, I think – the Cavs, you said that about, you know, maybe one more year. But I think DG has already taken that leap to me. Definitely, 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 definitely. And I think I think Evan, Evan Mobley needs a little. And more I think Evan Mobley is going to be right behind Cade Cunningham for the best player in that class. I mean, obviously, I think Scotty Barnes is quite good. I think I'm higher than Jalen Green uh, than a lot of people, but I think he's a really good player. I mean, he was 
really good the, after the All Star break last year. Like I think I mentioned on that, that on the podcast before, but I think the Cavs, I think they're going to be able to maybe you know win a playoff series next year. Uh, I I think, look, I get that they're that it's tough, but I think with Jared Allen and Evan Mobley, it's it's it all obviously is you know pred- is uh, you know predicates on Evan Mobley, but if he is able to to to, to carry the load there and or, you know help DG out, I mean, the thing about the Cavs is what do they do with Sexton? Because I mean, they can move him for. Or can they even move him though? Because he's. he's I think. Coming. I think he wants to stay. I think the Cavs are curious. I think it'll end up being a one-year deal. That they're going to see what the deal is, and if it works out, you know, he'll sign an extension. And if it doesn't, you know, he'll move on. I think. I mean, he's restricted anyway, so Cleveland has full control. And I don't think there's going to be a team out there that gives him. I mean, it is the NBA. Maybe a team will throw out three for fifty or sixty, and he'll bite. But I don't know. I feel like he'll want a one-year deal, prove it type deal anyway. Yeah, I mean. I think the Raptors are obviously in a pretty good spot. Although, you know, uh, would you be surprised to learn that Fred Van Vliet is older than Joel Embiid and Pascal Siakam? Well, he was undrafted, so he had a grind. Like, uh, I don't know how many years, but, like, it was – I I was just surprised to learn that the Raptors' best players are much older than I thought they were. And also the fact that OG and Anobi once out – you know, there have been a lot of rumors that OG and Anobi, who a lot – you know, was really one of their best young players – does not want to be there apparently. And, um, you know, a lot of teams have called for them. He's been linked to Portland a lot. Another really interesting team, by the way. I mean, the Portland Trailblazers. Well, they're just, they're in a rebuild and they should, no, they no, need a trade. No, team. they're not, they're not rebuilding though. Their plan is to go all in for this year. How unbelievable is that? <laughs> they're going to trade, they're going to trade um the number seven pick or whatever for, for like an established veteran and trade all the guys and go all in with Damon Anthony Simon. So, I mean, that's their plan, but, uh, Yes, just, it, I mean that's just how bad teams stay bad. I mean they had that one year where they made the conference finals, but Got outside of that, players. Damian Lillard years they've had nothing to show for it. Yeah, I mean it's, I, I don't know how Damian Lillard doesn't. I, he is a look. Maybe he loves Portland. He's, he's corny, happy there. Yeah, and he's content, but like to a certain to a certain point, got to get out of there, man. I mean you're yeah. Damian Lillard's thirty, about to turn thirty-two in literally a month, basically. I mean, dude, you do you want to compete for a title or not? Because it's not going to happen in Portland at the end of the day in, in his prime. I mean, he's still, he, he's definitely slowing down. I mean, this year, I mean, I know he was banged up, played a lot less yeah, games, I mean, but he was hurt, though. 40% from the field. He was hurt though. He played like 20 games. He was hurt. No, and that's what I, I prefaced with that. 30 games. He no, played. No, um, I, mean, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can even make judgment on the season. I mean, you remember that insane, like 60 point playoff game he had. That was crazy. I don't, yeah, we got to see, man. I, I really want to see Damian Lillard. And, you know, he had CJ McCollum, obviously, but the Pel- I feel like Damian Lillard has track. never had a true superstar. The Pelicans, man, they're, they're if Zion they comes back, the, that team can, can legit. They, can they challenge in the West next year? If Zion Williamson plays and is legit, I mean, he it's very interesting there. hearing him say that he really wants to be in New Orleans. Like, it no, seems all the all the NBA media with Zion wants out. He's not playing for this. And he's coming out and being like, I'm very happy here. Report, this yeah, is where I, I want to be. The report apparently was like that the whole thing had flipped and it was like that Zion had wanted to play and then it was the Pelicans holding him out and not the other way around, which I was kind of surprised to learn. I think Zion needs to I mean, the Pelicans, you look at them. CJ McCollum great, man. They're picking eighth in the draft. You know, if they use that pick, you'll get a top, you know, a solid young player. But I agree, CJ McCollum was great. They have Brandon Ingram. If you, if Zion Williamson returns and is, you know, the all star superstar he was, yeah. yeah, they are a legit team, 100%. And um, they need a few more pieces, though. They need some, some more role player type players. But McCollum, Ingram, and Williamson is as good a big three as there is in the league. And that's just a fact. Yeah, if I mean, Zion not, comes back, yeah, it's not, but Zion, like, bro, I fear, like, I just think people forget just because of Zion's injury issues, like, how good this man was when he played his full season. Like, Griff, he was the most efficient scorer in the NBA by far. He was a top 15 he player, shot 60%. It was ridiculous, he had 27 and six in his first year. Like, he was the best, he was one of the best players in the league, absolutely. 27 and seven, 26 seven. and seven. 27 and seven, yeah. And then seven. Zion's great. It's just a matter of if he can be 
the same efficiency and, and continue to grow if you can. I mean, wow, it's going to be really exciting to see. Um, all right, let's let's move on to the NBA draft. I mean, this is a very interesting draft. Um, you know, the top five picks are all kind of just like, it's just like there's no teams in there that you can just get yourself excited about. The order, Detroit, obviously. Detroit because, like, I mean, is Detroit in the top five this year? Yeah, Detroit's number right? five. Yeah, but I would say Detroit because of Cade. Yeah, I guess. But you've got, obviously, the Magic, Thunder, Rockets, Kings, Pistons. I mean, what what – the draft is on Wednesday, I believe. Some, yeah. Um, I mean, what are your thoughts on on who's going to go number one? I mean, the Magic. I think it's they need be- a big. I think. I mean, do they? They draft from Obama. That didn't work out. They have Wendell Carter Jr. I mean, Wendell Carter Jr. is a really good player, but I think he's a definite. Um, but they've got Cole Anthony. They've got Jalen Suggs. I mean, they're just some, this team that's just like all these guys, best, all these young they're, guys. Their best player, their best young player by far is Franz Wagner. By far, he's really. Yeah. Good. He's I a, forgot to mention him. He's yeah. I mean, they, that's what I'm saying. They've got all these young guys. Like some are, they're Markel just like Fultz. I feel like it's just a lot of average to you know above average guys. I personally feel they need to go with either Chet or Paolo. But what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think I would agree. I let me preface this by saying I'm in total agreement with you, and I still think that they're going to go with Jabari at one. I think Paolo is the best player in this class for me by by a lot, and I think Chet is number two. And to me. I I think Jaden Ivey is the third best. I think Jaden Ivey is going to be a future offensive superstar. I think he scores the ball better than anybody else in college basketball. And I think he's probably the best offensive player in this draft. I get it. He's a little older than Jabari Chet and Paulo, but I still think I would take him over Jabari. But I still think, you know, it's the Orlando Magic. And I think that Jabari is going to be the number one pick. And to me, I think Chet is going to go number two and Paulo number three. As I think the Rockets love Paulo. And if he's there, the Rockets will absolutely take him. With the I mean, set- let me, let me, sorry, sorry, just one more thing. If the stack, so someone, so I was watching ESPN the other day, or I saw it on Twitter, but it was definitely from the ESPN account. And it said that the Kings want to, might trade out of four, even though they view this as a four player draft, meaning Jabari, Chet, Paulo, and Ivy. What? How does that make any sense? That's why the Kings haven't made the playoffs, you know, longer than anybody else in North American professional sports. They are a terrible franchise. And if they trade away from the chance to take Jaden, which it looks like they, they're going to do just because, you know, they have, De, uh, you know, De'Aaron and Daniel, I, I, I don't get it. That I think Jaden Ivey is going to, is the most underrated player coming in. And I, but I do think Paulo for me is the best, is the best prospect and should be taken first. I think that, um, you know, I, I, I do agree with what you said. I mean, I think that this draft is, is fascinating. I think those guys, four guys are the clear cut top four. I do like, you know, Keegan Murray is another guy. I do like, obviously, you've got guys like AJ Griffin. Um, you know, you've got the, the Ochai Ajabajis. Ochai um, yeah. I think he's yeah. – my guy Johnny my Davis guy. is in. I've seen Johnny Davis's commercial a hundred times at this yeah, point. Yeah, I mean, my uh, my sleeper who I love for this pick, who I would actually take him above Keegan Murray, uh, is Jalen Duran. I think is a really good player, and I think he's going to end up in the lottery. I think, even though he might fall out, I think he'll definitely be top twenty. But I think this guy is going to end up being a really good NBA big man. Yeah, but I mean, this is uh, I mean, I think for teams like the thunder and rockets those two teams need big men and i think that they are probably salivating it you know those two teams i would be shocked if one of their picks was not either if both of their picks was not two of the players out of jabari chet and Paolo. i'd be shocked if i'm being honest um especially with you know guys like shy and, and jalen green there that you know jaden ivy's a great player but it's it just i think there's a, i think there's a huge chance they might pair Jay, if if Paulo and Chet are gone for the Houston Rockets, I think they might end up taking Jaden Ivey. Maybe, but I, I think that, like you said, it, it, Jabari might end up going number one, and Chet or, or pa- I mean, it's a very good, you know, the NBA draft is one of those things where it's so top heavy every year, and then yeah, once you get out of like the top yeah, six or seven, it's like. Just because a total wash. Once you're out of the top five, what you're hoping for at best, it's so different from the NFL to me. It's so fascinating because, oh what my you're, God, what you're hoping, what you're the NFL draft for. is like one of the most exciting sporting things, I would argue, in the year. Like outside of like the, the finals or a Super Bowl or like a World Series, like the NFL draft is like more exciting than like most things in sports. Yeah. I think, I think definitely, um, 
the thing about the basketball that's so fascinating is because once you're out of really like the top six, seven, like you mentioned, like what you're hoping for is a role player that can contribute. And in the second round, you're hoping for a guy that can maybe fill, you know, the end of the bench one day. Like, <laughs> like I'm, but it, it's true. Like, yeah. What you're looking second for. Second round in the NBA is just irrelevant. It's pretty yeah, funny. Yeah. I mean, you know, Nikola Jokic and Draymond Green, obviously, are probably the two best second round picks. Well, no, yeah, but obviously there's no, 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 no but I'm, I'm saying that it's so rare. No, 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 of course, of course, of course. Um, but I just think like uh sorry, I you know, it's so interesting that once you're out of the if you if you have the ninth pick and like the outcome is like a really good role player, you're like, okay, I'm very happy with that. It's it's just so different than the NBA or than the yeah, NBA. but if you get the it's interesting because if you have the ninth pick in the NBA draft, like if that's how the lottery works out, you're like damn it like this sucks ninth pick in the nfl draft they're like okay we're in business here we're in the top 10 it's pretty cool yeah for sure same with mlb i mean mlb's mlb's just total wash though i feel like yeah, i mean you got that with a uh, kumar you gotta you gotta you gotta taste to that yeah i mean they do have they'll get the comp pick at whatever 11 or so it, it worked out fine but um i mean what your your top four for i mean we we're talking about the top four so I mean, what's your prediction for how that goes? Final prediction for the top four is uh, I'll say Jabari at one, Chet at two, Paolo at three, Jaden at four. I'm going to go Chet one, Paolo two, Jabari three, and then some – stupid stuff that I, I think the kings will mess up and not take Jaden ivy yeah i mean i think it's very possible like i i could see like aj griffin or keegan murray at that spot i think keegan murray would kind of be a, i think keegan murray is a little overrated to be honest we'll see i mean the nba is so hard to really know who's gonna be who's gonna be what i mean it's just such a it's crazy this how the draft it's so like underwhelming too i feel like like it's kind of, they just kind of have it in the schedule. It's like, oh, NBA draft. And it, you watch like the first five picks and you're like, all right, call them that. The thing about the, the NBA draft will always hold a special place in my heart because that was the, you know, the day I circled on the calendar as a Sixers fan for a little while during the pro. During the- <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Cavs have been there too, but many times. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, I mean, when that's the thing, when you get a player like a LeBron James, at number one, like obviously the draft means a little more something, or like Zion's the most recent, I guess. Superstar ben, I remember one. Ben Simmons, like people forget, but Ben Simmons was a fucking prophet, dude. To like, like that man was extremely highly rated coming out. Like, yeah, yeah I mean, for for me, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that's our our predictions for the draft. I mean, I know it's not the most exciting, uh, high entertaining, um, you know, thing going on in the NBA, but definitely something to mention with it coming up, and we'll we'll talk about it next week um you know we'll, we'll break it down and hopefully there's some maybe trades i mean that's usually what's exciting about the nba draft is usually you see some guys get traded some role players rarely you know you do see some superstars i remember i think jimmy butler was traded the bulls on draft night was that the zach levine trade yeah he was traded to the timberwolves yeah oh right right, right. He traded to the timberwolves zach levine traded the bulls yep Correct. man jimmy butler has gotten around yeah four teams i believe four teams well, Chicago, Minnesota, Philly, Miami. Yeah. Wow. Pretty interesting. Yeah. What did the Sixers – did Jimmy Butler go – it was a sign-in trade to Miami? Yeah, I mean, we, it was either that or losing outright in free agency. So what did you get What did you get for him again? Protected first-rounder and Josh Richardson, which we ended up flipping for Seth Curry like a year later. So it ended up being fine, which ended up yeah. getting – like they – it really – transit of property really got us hard and funny. Enough. <laughs> yeah. And it ended up being fine. That's funny. Yeah. All right. Well, I think with that, that will do it for this week's episode of Outside the Arena. Um, all NBA today, but, you know, the NBA is – it was the NBA week, I guess you could say, with the draft and, and the NBA finals wrapping up. So expect to see, I guess, a lot more MLB discussions and also NFL as we get closer and closer to the season, as well as some more guests. We're working on more guests with uh, – you know, the MLB trade deadline, we've got some, you know, hopefully something cooking there. We've got, uh, I know I've been in contact with uh, a Mets guy who also does, uh, you know, NFL draft type stuff and, and you know, football stuff for Bleacher Report. So hopefully we get some of these guys on for you guys. Um, but with that being said, that'll do it for this week's episode. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. 
be sure to check out our recent videos as well as follow us on Instagram at Outside the Arena Podcast. Check us out on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as well at Outside the Arena there. We appreciate all the support and we hope you guys keep enjoying the content. We'll see you all next week on Outside the Arena.